Hey everyone, Matt Lake here, back with another Unreal 5 tutorial. In today's video, I'm going to show you a kind of cool, secret, undocumented feature in Sequencer. Uh, Chris Murphy put me onto it on Twitter. He's an Unreal evangelist, so huge shout out to him. Uh, but I just wanted to spread the word about this feature, which uh, very little people know about. Uh, but basically what this feature is, is a way for you to manipulate Sequencer to call uh, functions without using an event and uh, they can act like an event tick again without using an event tick um, but I'll, I'll demonstrate what the what the feature does and we can break down how to set it up and yeah so let's go so I've set up a level sequence already with a very simple character skeletal mesh and a light um, so as you can see we've got some timeline data right down here and we've got a single variable no events, no nothing. And it's just cycling between red, green, and blue. And what this blueprint's also doing is it's basically calling a function every frame with this detail. And um, I'm basically changing the color of the character and I'm changing the color of the light. Uh, so this is the blueprint here. And if I just drag this off to the side, and if we preview the... Um, the blueprint so we can see what it's actually triggering and we go to that function which we've made which I'll demonstrate how we make it if we scrub the timeline you can see that function is constantly getting fired and the moment the sequencer stops being evaluated it stops updating uh, which is really cool really powerful and it's basically getting this this uh, value fed in which is this one here on the timeline which is super cool and super powerful um, you might be thinking, oh, why aren't you just tracking the light color on the light component? Um, yeah, you can do that for very specific variables, uh, but what this allows you to do is actually expose functions. You can do multiple things. Uh, so you can see I'm doing both setting the light color and setting the body color. So yeah, so let's dig into how this is set up. It's very simple, it's very straightforward, and there might be a little nugget of uh, cinematic information along the way for you. So yeah, I hope this helps. Okay, so let's get started. So let's start by making a brand new blueprint. Let's go to our blueprints folder, make a brand new one. Let's just call him BP tutorial example. And let's just do the exact same setup. Um, so let's just drag a light in. So we've got a light right there, a little point light. So if you're not familiar, there's a ability in um, Blueprints to expose variables to Sequencer. So what you can do is uh, once you've made a, a new variable, so let's just make a bool, let's just call it bool test. There's options over here on the right-hand side where one of them allows you to expose to cinematics, uh, which basically allows a quick access into uh, the Sequencer. So if we enable that, Compile and save, and let's just go quickly make a sequence of files so we can demonstrate what that's done. Let's make a new animation level sequence. So we've got this level sequence, and let's bring our our tutorial blueprint in. So yeah, now if you track on the, the tutorial example, uh, you'll now see our bool test is there in the properties. It's really easy to access, and then you can freely key. To your heart's content. Um, obviously that bool doesn't do anything at the moment because we're about to set that up but yeah that's a really cool little tidbit if those uh, for those out there who didn't know that you could do that. So back over to our uh, tutorial example basically there's a secret use case in here where if you have a function with the exact same name as a variable but with set at the beginning so set and then that variable gets modified in sequencer that function will then just start being called. So let's set one up. So let's do set, S-E-T, and then we'll do bool test, okay? So we'll make that match exactly. So I'll just put a capital B down here. So they match exactly the same, except that's got S-E-T at the beginning, okay? Another thing we're gonna have to do to get this to work is we're gonna have to do call in editor. So you need to make sure you get your function clicked, and then you need to enable call in editor over here on the right-hand side. And finally, to get this to work, you need to make sure that the function has an input which is matching the data type that we set up. So we're making a bool, so we want to add an input, and then we want to make sure that that's a bool. So if this is a linear color, you make sure it's a linear color. If it's an anim sequence, etc., you got to make sure it matches. Um, the, the name doesn't matter so much in here for the input, but 
let's just call it bool. And what we can do is if we quite simply just do print and we can do print the bool, compile and save that. And if we head back over into here uh, and we'll bring our sequencer just off so we can see our output log. And now you'll see we're getting the print false. Now if we key it and change it up to true, you'll see as we scrub, it's evaluating every frame and it keeps changing. Which is really cool, really handy. Um, this same thing works for floats. So if we, we just quickly set up a float example. If we go back over here, delete that out. Now we'll do, we'll do the float test instead. And you can see it starts printing out zero, zero, zero. So what we can do is if we simply add a zero key on there, then we'll key that at 100 there. And if we watch carefully in the output log, when it starts printing, it's actually going up and matching the exact same value in there, which is really powerful. So yeah, like I say, um, as you just saw there, it was actually um, evaluating that exact that function. So the world is now your oyster. You've got so much functionality that's exposed through here and you don't have to have it tied down to um, an event tick that's always checking for the variables or you don't have to tie it to loads of events. It's very simple to just have a, like one variable that you're modifying and then a different function will, will just start uh, updating for whatever you need. Um, and it's really good for previewing. But yeah, guys, um, if you've got any comments, drop them below, I'll reply to everything. Feel free to find me on Twitter at MattLakeTA. Um, and yeah, guys, have a great day. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.